Hey, welcome to Film vs. Movie, the podcast where we debate the cinema you hate. I'm your co-host, Belton Delane Facey. And my name's Chris Scher. And on this podcast, we watch the films that have been slandered, desecrated, forced into a Duncan commercial, and forced to play Qbert by public opinion. <laughs> And one of us tells you why it's actually pretty good. And the other one normally tells you why it's a steaming pile of shit. And this episode is the first of three double feature face-offs. Instead of debating a single film like we usually do, we're arguing which of two films is better. And then you get to decide who wins. You'll be able to find a link in our Instagram bio where you can vote. And we'll reveal the results of the vote on our anniversary show on June 25th where the loser of two face-offs will face punishment. Ooh. <laughs> Did we decide what the punishment is? I uh, I think we talked about it. We, ne- we definitely narrowed it down. We I think we were talking about like super spicy food while one of us has to argue. Uh, so, uh, something like that. Okay. It's probably going to be food related. <laughs> All right. But, t- uh, but today's face-off is the Adam Sandler round. Uh, we're going between two classics, Pixels and Jack and Jill. Both <laughs> hated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both got multiple Razzie nominations. Both <laughs> just in the Adam Sandler cinematic universe, though. Yeah. just with It's just Adam Sandler always hanging out with beautiful women and all of his friends. I think people don't like Adam Sandler just because he lives the life that everybody wished wishes they lived uh, yeah because he he essentially gets paid to hang out with his friends and then uh, uh, and then kiss beautiful women like he's known for dressing so comfortably it's become a style <laughs> just walking around in basketball shorts and jersey in between fucking shooting he will just go play pickup basketball in the park yeah, yeah, it's it's su- it's such a flex because also like if I've seen pictures of him pl- playing b- basketball. It's like people who who haven't like grown up playing basketball might not realize this. He uses like one of the best, most expensive basketballs out there as his outdoor ball, which means it gets ruined constantly, and he just replaces it like it's nothing. Well, yeah, he's got the money to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ev- uh, yeah. Everyone else is just sh- uh, showing up with, uh, with like the sh- uh, the shave balls they took from camp eight years ago, and, uh, and he's like, "Yeah, this is fresh off the line." <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. D- do you want to like tell everyone about Jack and Jill first, or should I start with Pixels? You start with Pixels. Okay. So Pixels is about aliens invading via '80s video games. So it starts off in 1982. Sam Brenner loses a championship game of like this big video game tournament. He loses through the game of Donkey Kong to Eddie, who gives himself the nickname of Fire Blaster. Which I have to say, when watching it at first, I thought he said Finger Blaster. I was, <laughs> I was just like, are. Is this movie for kids? And I think kids are just going to assume he's referring to like his fingers moving, playing video games. Look, Finger Blaster would have been a great name the way he walked in with like two beautiful women. <laughs> he's like, I don't know how old, how old was he in that scene? Because he's played by Peter Dinklage. Yeah, I don't even know. Because yeah, because it, it's weird. Because uh, the grown version of everyone in, in that scene, it's like Adam Sandler, Peter Dinklage, Kevin James. All around the same age. And then you have Josh Gad, which I'm pretty sure Josh Gad is younger than all of them. Yeah, but I kind of like, he was walking around with like 23 year old women. And that, <laughs> see, that's why I'm just like, I don't know. Was he supposed to be an adult? Or is that like, I don't know. This whole movie is kind of like what a kid in the 80s think would be the coolest thing possible. Yeah, like. Like honestly, uh, honestly, Eddie, that first uh, scene, his entire personality just uh, just seemed to be had sex once and brags about it for the rest of his life. <laughs> uh, but, so the tor- uh, the tournament footage uh, 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 of that day went into this time capsule that got launched into space. Flash forward to present day, uh, Sam is an electronics installer. His best friend, Will, played by Kevin James, is president of the United States. Okay, I was like, I was looking at my phone or something. Did they explain how he became president? Nope, he's just president. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> like it's a, it's a funny scene because like it just shows them in a bar. The bar uh, the bar is empty, and then they w uh, walk out. There are protesters because his approval rating is uh, is low, and so he's getting into like the Secret Service limo. And Adam Sandler go uh, goes to what's essentially like a Radio Shack van. <laughs> He's a he's an off brand geek squad yeah. member. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he is, and uh, and so during that uh, uh, while that's happening, an Air Force base is attacked by aliens in the form of the game Galaga, and uh, and so Adam Sandler he's uh, he's doing installs for an army colonel named Violet. They don't li uh, like each other because he tries to make a move and that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Adam Sandler is so charming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like they, and it's like they had a moment getting, getting over like, oh, both of them had cheating exes. Uh, 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 but anyway, so uh, uh, so they both go to the White House as, uh, uh, because uh, Sam is a consultant because... Uh, because his best friend, the president, is just like, "Hey, this looks like a video game. You know, video games. Advise us." And uh, and then he tries to, uh, to just barge into uh, to like the uh, the emer the war room, and he, uh, and they kick him out because it's the White House. You can't do that. Yeah, the the scene when he's walking in with the DARPA. So the woman that he hits on it works for DARPA, so she's all involved in this. And she rolls up next to him and he's like, oh my God, I think that woman's following me. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets, she meets him inside and she's, they're like, oh yeah, you have to go to the briefing room. And she's like, oh, can't go in there. And they're like, oh yeah. And then the president's waiting for you. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, I guess you're not that important. Like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so after that me it, uh, meeting, Sam w uh, meets with Ludlow, who was the, uh, who was a wonder kid at VU games who's now a huge conspiracy theorist that lives in his mom's basement grandma's grandma's basement and uh, and they conclude it's an alien attack and soon after that aliens send a message that uh, you know they uh, they are challenging her to uh, to a fight it's uh, uh, it's best out of five so if earth lose uh, so earth can't lose more than three uh, uh, earth can't lose three matches they already lost one and uh, and the aliens are saying like, hey, next attack is coming up, and so they uh, they're like, hey, th uh, this attack is coming up, and they figure out it's probably going to be, be a Taj Mahal. But the president's like, my approval rating so low, I can't just tell India that like some video game is going to attack them, and then the Taj Mahal gets destroyed by some video game. Uh, and so after that, Sam and Ludlow train Navy SEALs to play vi uh, uh, video games. Teach them all about the patterns. <laughs> Honestly, he just keeps yelling that throughout the movie. He's like, you gotta follow the patterns, not specific as to what they are. I uh, like they treat him like he has some supernatural power for video games. Well, no, he's just memorized the patterns. That's how you play him at it. You're just like figuring out the way it works. Yeah, and then he apparently just doesn't explain it to anyone or can't communicate. Oh, quickly. yeah, no, he doesn't do that. <laughs> Uh, and so they uh, they go to the next attack. The Navy SEALs struggle uh, uh, struggle against the game centipede, uh, uh, which they have like these lasers to shoot at them. And but then Sam and Ludlow take over, the, uh, master it, win the uh, win the battle, and, uh, and so they're like, "Hey, we're good at this." So then they free Eddie, who is now in jail, to join the team. Yeah, he has a lot of demands. Like he. He never wants to pay taxes again. He wants a stealth helicopter. He, uh, shit, what was he? He want, oh, and then he wants to have a night with Serena Williams and, and Martha Stewart. And Martha Stewart in the Lincoln room. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like it's a, is a crazy ass to uh, be like, hey, you're the government. Can you like sell me two women? <laughs> It'd be bizarre. Like you, I could see Trump doing it, but I couldn't see Obama doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I could see Trump not pulling it off. But I feel like if Obama asked you to do that, you'd be like, "Well, I guess for our country, I could do that." I don't know. Well, yeah, Obama's just better with words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and so soon after that, they t uh, they take on Pac Man and win. 
and the aliens give them Cubert as a prize, which Cubert is another 80s video game ca character, for those who don't know, just a little weird looking thing. Yeah, I didn't realize he could talk. I didn't think he could either. I like maybe they it, they just like gave, the aliens just gave him a voice because it was like, oh well, if he can't talk, he's just useless. Yeah, that's f you know the other thing. There's so much criticism about this movie. They're like they ruin. I think part of the reason I was like, yeah, I I don't hate this movie is because I have no attachment to any of the games that were shown. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I think that's very true because like I saw uh, I saw one. Re uh, uh, one review the guy uh, guy was like this makes me hate the things i love i would uh, i would burn all like my video game t-shirts if that didn't uh, leave me with like one shirt and uh, you can't self burn like that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after they get cuber as a prize they have a white house reception to honor them violet is sam's day but the aliens interrupted to announce earth forfeits because they cheated the last uh, round and Violet's son discovers cheat codes on A's glasses which he uses against the aliens and he used to beat Sam in 1982 and so aliens attack the reception they kidnap Violet's uh, son they launch a full attack on the uh, on DC Sam Violet and Will go up to their ship for the final battle Ludlow fights on the ground while Ludlow is fi uh, fighting they send down Lady Lisa another video game character that he's just fantasized over his entire life. And he convinces her to choose love over fighting him, which honestly, that's, a, that's like a confusing part. Cause she, cause she's like, that's just a random person. Like I feel, I feel like that's equivalent to like, if Beyonce decides she just wanted to like fight someone on the uh, on the subway and the person was like Beyonce don't fight me I love you she'd be like I don't know you and just continue <laughs> fighting anyway yeah I don't know the other thing is like none of the other characters could be reasoned with they're all like pixelated little creatures and she was just a full on human woman yeah <laughs> yeah cause it's not like, cause it's not like video games uh, back then were like complete uh, completely extensive in their per uh, personalities it's like they had a couple ca uh, character traits but overall like she was defined by being hot and literally being created by a man yep mm. and fighting with swords yeah yeah and, and so on the ship they play donkey kong which of course is the game uh, uh that sam lost so Sam struggles until Violent Son lets him uh, know Eddie cheated, and so he really is the best Donkey Kong pl uh, player. And he beats the game, saves Earth. Which also, I feel like at the very least, you're still the second best Donkey Kong player. You should have some confidence in this. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's a very fair point. <laughs> <laughs> also, they were like not really following the rules of Martin. They keep like ducking to the side of barrels and stuff. They're just breaking the whole barrier of how a video game works. Yeah. Which I guess like they are in real life, but yeah, I don't know. I get, I'm reading. I think I'm just reading too far into it. I think that's the issue. I think that's the criticism where everyone's reading into it. Like they, you would a video game. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, uh, uh, honestly, like a, uh, I will say the way they like actually play uh, play the games, it it does kind of give you the fantasy of uh, of like, oh, if I could like go in the games and like play uh, play for real, this is how it would go, and it would be fun. Which because I remember reading the book right, uh, Ray Player One, and there were like some, uh, some scenes where it's like they don't d do that as well, and uh, and it's like the, and it's like that was something I was missing from that book. I was just like, oh. Th if uh, if that book had watched this movie first, maybe it'd be better. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, so yeah, they save Earth. All the aliens and video game characters disappear, including Lady Lisa, uh, uh, which disappoints Ludlow. The team is honored as heroes. Sam and Violet become a couple. Uh, uh, Eddie gets with Serena Williams and Martha Stewart in the Lincoln bedroom. Like he literally just tur uh, turns around and they're waving him in. And then Q uh, and then the movie ends with Cubert turning into Lady Lisa as like everyone applauds. 
Mary, he, Lee, Lisa Cuber marries Ludlow and they have little Q birds, uh, 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 which was then succeeded by me just yelling, what the fuck at my TV for like 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's good that Josh Gad's character can only have little Q birds because that effectively makes him sterile. <laughs> and that character didn't need to have kids like that's some people shouldn't have kids. They should just have like little cute creatures that don't require much care. Yeah, yeah, it's still a weird decision for everyone to be applauding Cubert turning, becoming Josh Gad's sex doll, and then the fact they can reproduce like uh, it creates a lot more uh, uh, questions. Because uh, ba based on the way things were. Uh, things work in this movie i have to conclude that when they sent uh, that time castle they also included the actual uh, some form of the actual g uh, games so all the games are all the, everything we see on screen is based on the code of those games which implies the original creators of cuber coded him with a full female reproductive system like yeah you saw him right yeah, it was like, it was like uh, why would they do that? I don't know. Weird creators. But also, I feel like maybe that applause was just kind of like, what do we do with this? Like, what if you saw a weird alien creature turn into a human and then shit out more weird alien creatures? And you just like keep clapping. Like, I don't know what else you could do to that. Maybe gasp? I, I, I don't know. It could have... It could, uh, 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 and then with Josh Gad, you know, the developing a better personality. That's fair. <laughs> so Pixels came out in uh, in 2015. It's actually based on a tw uh, 2010 short film fr uh, from fan uh, from France uh, uh, of the same name, the, uh, which uh, I wasn't able to uh, to watch the actual short film, but based on why found it seems uh, like the main thing they took was uh, just the visuals of a video games characters destroying a city <laughs> and so uh, and so adam, uh, adam sandler b uh, uh, bought the adaptation rights he brought on t uh, uh, tim Her uh, Harley to uh, uh, to write the script who's a frequent adam sandler collaborator he worked on saturday night live for uh, for a while, he also wrote a lot of Adam Sandler movies like The War Boy, Big Daddy, and The Wedding S Singer. Um, it was, and apparently the studio hated the first draft, <laughs> and uh, and so, but then they decided to bring on Kevin James to play the president, and they rewrote the script around the idea that Kevin James is the president. <laughs> 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 And so the film was directed by Chris Columbus, who has like a good amount of hits in his filmography. He directed the first two Home Alone movies, Mrs. Doubtfire, and the first two Harry Potters. Oh, damn. Yeah. And and in an interview with SlashFilm.com, he said the script was the most original concept he had seen in years. And so that got him excited to jump on the project. <laughs> Uh, uh, and it was shot mostly in uh, in Toronto. The uh, the budget. So for this film, I uh, the sources on the budget kept uh, kept ranging anywhere between a eight million dollars and one hundred ten million dollars. Uh, it made two hundred forty five million dollars at the uh, at the box office. So it uh, so depending on which budget they're going with. Uh, with really depends on how well it did. Well, I mean, it, it broke even. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we're going uh, general, like ho uh, Hollywood finances, a, a movie needs to make like two and a half times its budget to be considered successful. So, uh, so if it was 110 million, it's like almost there. 88 million was successful. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, as a recording, it has a Rotten Tomato score of eighteen percent, IMDb score of five point six, and it was nominated for five Razzies, including Worst Picture, Worst Actor, the uh, uh, my bad, six Razzies because both Josh Gad and Kevin James were nominated for Worst Supporting Actor, Michelle Mong and and was supported for Worst Supporting Actress, which. I feel like she just caused stray there. <laughs> like I, uh, 
like I uh, like I kind of understand critics not, uh, not liking the uh, not liking the other th uh, three based on principle. She was just there. Yeah, she didn't really do much except like fall for Adam Sandler. Like, yeah, <laughs> and have like some cool technology lines. Yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she was like the, uh, their Alfred at times. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that is Pixels. Okay, now we're gonna get into Jack and Jill. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna have to be a little gentle with me. This is my first time doing the production notes, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so it opens on a montage of twins, just different twins, kind of talking about the relationship we have, they have with each other. And then the opening scene is Adam Sandler, Jack Settlestein, uh, who is a marketing executive in LA. He's shooting an ad for Pepto Bismol. With I'm blanking on who the actor is. Uh, was it Regis Philbin? Yeah, it was Regis Philbin. Where Regis was complaining that the the stomach got all the good lines. Okay. Uh, yeah, which I mean, which I mean, it, it's Pepto Bismol. The stomach should get the good lines. <laughs> uh, and then he starts talking to Nick Swartzen, who I'm blanking on the character's name, and Tim Meadows, and they're talking about how they're. Uh, contract with Duncan is about to expire and they're not going to renew it unless they can get Al Pacino to star in their commercial for the new Dunkachino. I, I feel like the, uh, that's an ask where uh, where they're like, we don't want to work with you anymore. So we're just going to make this ridiculous request we know you can't fulfill. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't know. Did they know about the? OK, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. So then uh while that's going on, Jack reveals that his twin sister, Jill Sadelstein, is going to come up and visit him or come out and visit him from the Bronx. Jill is uh, his twin sister who's been vying for his attention his entire life. He was sort of the successful, smart, charming one, and she was the clingy, kind of loserish one. Uh, Shit, man. Okay. Uh, she comes up for Christmas and basically just starts causing problems nonstop for Jack. She ends up on The Price is Right, where when she spins the big wheel, it just instantly knocks her unconscious. <laughs> she wins a bunch of stuff. She gets a jet ski. It cuts to her jet skiing around in the pool. <laughs> uh, she's hanging out with the kids and the wife. She takes the kids to a pony track or no, not a pony track. That's a betting thing. Like a uh, a pony carousel. Yeah, it, it it was like one uh, one of those like petting zoos that let you ride the horse. Yeah, and then she jumps on and it just like smashes under. Her. <laughs> um, and then Jack becomes very tired of his sister and he's talking to his wife about it and he's basically like, oh, it's because she doesn't have anyone else. Uh, so he tries to set her up on a date. He sets he uh has her create a profile on like Match dot com and a few other websites. She gets none, so then he secretly puts an ad out on Craigslist where he advertises her as like a sexy blonde masseuse, and then he ends up getting someone called Fun Bucket, played by Norm MacDonald, the late great McNorm Norm MacDonald. Uh, they go on the date. Norm MacDonald leaves without saying anything. She comes back. Uh, Jack, to cheer up, sent, takes her to a Lakers game. While they're at the Lakers game, uh, Jill or Al Pacino starts fucking Jill, I fucking Jill, and starts hitting on her aggressively. They leave the Lakers game. Jack starts trying to get Jill to date Al Pacino in order to get him to do the commercial. Yeah, which also because they went to the Lakers game because... Uh, because the marketing agency was like, we know Al Pacino is going uh, gonna to be there. So we're giving you these uh, tickets so that you could talk to him. When they say that, I assume Al Pacino was going to be in a suite or something. But no, he he's just front court and, there are, and they have seats on the other side of the arena. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went up to him and he's like, oh, yeah, I was at the opening for Paw Patrol 3. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so Jack starts pressuring Jill to go on a date with him. She ultimately does go on a date with him. Al Pacino starts acting like a kind of megalomaniac weirdo creep. He's like, Neat. oh, wait, no, no, no. There's, they have the birthday party. Uh, Jill gets upset they don't have a second cake. Then ultimately she goes on a date with Al Pacino, has a bad time, leaves. She gets into an argument with Jack, ends up sleeping outside 
runs into their gardener named Felipe, I think. Yeah, I think it's Felipe. Uh, gardener takes uh, her to a family cookout. She has a lovely time. She gets back. Jack gets on a call or Jack talks to Al Pacino. Al Pacino's like, you have to get him, get her to stay. Jack invites her to come on the cruise. A fake apologizes uh, during the middle of a big fart scene. And then on the cruise, Jack tries to talk up Al Pacino a little bit. She says no. Uh, they have a short while of being kind of happy. And then ultimately, Jack takes a phone call from Al Pacino, pretends to be Jill, agrees to go on a date with him, dresses in drag. <laughs> like in the movie, he dresses in drag, even though he's also Jill dressed in drag. Yeah, like the, uh, like it's weird because that was like a very meta moment and they make zero like jokes or commentary about it. Like it, it, that just felt like a missed opportunity. Yeah. So Al Pacino ends up picking up Jack in drag by helicopter. They have a really weird night during the weird night. Jill calls Jack. Here's Al Pacino on the other line, gets angry, leaves the cruise early, heads back to the Bronx uh, on New Year's Eve. She's out to dinner by herself with a picture of her dead mom. Yeah, I think it's yeah. dead mom. Uh, she's getting made fun of from a high school. Uh, she's getting made fun fun of by high school classmates and then ultimately jack shows up apologizes then al pacino shows up in character asks for her hand she tells him no they end up going back to jill's house where felipe shows up and they end up living happily ever after uh, yeah did i miss anything i i think you got also with like their mom being that whenever they talk about their recently this sees mom they always talk about it as if jack did also lose his mom like they, they keep saying like oh i have some sympathy for uh, for jill she just lost her mom and it's like that was also jack's mom like <laughs> yeah but like i don't know it's clear that she was kind of all she had yeah. Okay, so honestly, it was kind of hard to find information for this. No one wanted to go on the record and say <laughs> they wanted they worked on this movie. There was no like vulture like uh oral diary of Jack and Jill. <laughs> uh it was written by it was released in on November 11th, 2011. It was written by Ben Zoom, Steve Corey, and Adam Sandler. It was directed by Dennis Dugan of Grown Ups 2 and Love. Uh, the cinema cinematographer was Dean Cudley, uh, who framed Roger Ra Rabbit. He did that movie. And then the budget was 79 million. The box office was 149 million. It holds the record for the most Razzies winning all 10 categories. Oh my God. And then when it was released, it became like a Twitter meme where a parody account called Jack and Jill movie start got became really popular and had a moment and ultimately the studio had to petition twitter to get them to take the account <laughs> down i'm not gonna lie that's all i could find on the movie <laughs> I, uh, I mean i just uh, uh, i just uh, like that like it's uh, it's about one all uh, uh, all 10 uh, 10 razzies i'm uh, uh, I'm just uh, I'm just mad. at at that point if you're nominated for all the Razzies you gotta show up for the ceremony if anything just for the party wait shit I, I didn't look up if he showed up for the I don't think he did uh, uh, no uh, 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 no I mean it's it's Adam Sandler he he could go to the Razzies anytime he wants <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I feel like uh, I feel like the Twitter uh, uh, Twitter account like it. If this had come out like in the time in the time of TikTok, it I think a lot of people would have had so much fun with it. Like I could see a Jack a Jack and Jill uh, challenge where it's like you uh, where it's like you just do sketch uh, sketches with yourself dressed up as the other gender and just uh, and just do like I don't know like random things in the movie. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it just got a lot of hate because Adam. I think if like a different actor had made this movie. And it was like just as good as this one. People would just be like, oh, that's a bad movie. But I think since it was Adam Sandler playing both parts, he just got absolutely destroyed. Oh, yeah. Because I, I do think Adam Sandler, like, 
Like, especially around that time, he essentially reached a point where he was the nickelback of actors. Like, pe people just started making jokes about him, not even knowing what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, I, I said for at least a decade, and people didn't believe me until Uncut Gems came out. I firmly believe Adam Sandler has always been a great actor. He's just a much better businessman and understands he has an audience. And so most of the stuff just stays in that audience. But like even when in the in that audience, you can still hit heartfelt notes. Yeah. Like Big Daddy. The, you know Big Daddy? Yeah. Yeah. That's like a really touching movie with like where he plays kind of like a complex character a little bit. But I don't know. Mm. Everyone oh, just sort of remembers him for Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. I feel like that's what everyone expects. But dude, Hustle, Hustle was such a good fucking movie. Yeah, oh my I, God. I think between Uncut Gems and Hustle, the key to getting Adam Sandler to play good, like pretty dramatic roles, just put NBA players in the movie. <laughs> like, like they got Kevin Garnett, they got Anthony uh, uh, Edwards. I'm pretty... Uh, I'm pretty sure, sure. Like right now, he's in me. Like, uh, like, all right, who's also signed up for this? And they're like Devin Booker. It's like I'm in. <laughs> I mean, shit. Even Jack and Jill had Shaq. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. Adam uh, Sandler, like, all, uh, also combined with the fact that, like, for. Uh, uh, that like from what I read, he's apparently like a really good person to work with. So, uh, uh, so it's like he he keeps being able to get all these people to do his movies. Yeah, and they always like do pretty well too. Yeah, like uh, like I'll uh, like I'll be honest. I would have so much respect for someone who follows up an Oscar winning performance with an Adam Sandler movie because that tells me it's like all right you got your Oscar now you just want to have fun <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like uh, like you can accuse a a Adam Sandler of a lot of things no one's accused him of a bad time yeah I mean I every single time he shoots I feel like the pitch to other actors is so easy where he's just like yeah just come out we'll film for like Eight weeks, you can bring your wife and kids. We'll be in like Hawaii or Los Angeles. It'll be a real chill time. No high expectations or anything. I feel. Uh, I feel. Uh, uh, I feel like that was the entire pitch for grownups. Like, uh, like it was. Uh, like he just got to get on the phone with his friends, uh, and it's just like. Hey, you want to just spend a few uh, a few weeks like up uh, up at a lake like at summer camp? And they were like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Grown Ups gets so much hate. It's a solid movie. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's a simple fun uh, fun movie. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's like the Avengers for that Adam Sandler cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, uh, yeah. It's like I I uh, I want to see like the uh, uh, the Adam Sandler version of like the Avengers group sh uh, group showers just everyone in all their glory. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you want right. to start us off or yeah. should I? All right. So now it's time for our opening statements. I will be uh, arguing for Pixels. Chris will be arguing for Jack and Jill. Uh, all right. So let's be honest. We're grading both these films on a scale specifically made for Happy Madison Productions. On that scale, Pixels is the most adventurous film and creative premise in their catalog. The classic Sandler elements are seamlessly mixed into a fun sci-fi playground that really makes you think about how society views problems through the lens of competition. Adam Sandler takes hate, but that's only because he's prolific and has never made a bad movie before. <laughs> in fact, the only movie that could be better than a movie with Adam Sandler in it is a movie with two Adam Sandlers in it. <laughs> Quite frankly, the biggest movie with this movie is that there should there were only two Adam Sandlers, and there should have been three or four. <laughs> Look, it's it's a classic. I don't know what people were like, where the hate is. I just kind of like went in with the expectations I have for an Adam Sandler movie, and I was like pleasantly surprised. It's got gross out jokes. It's got silly voices, great one liners, and centers around. If you find his voice and mannerisms funny, like I just love Adam Sandler. So anything he's in, I'm going to enjoy. 
Yeah, I I think with Jack and Jill part uh, part of it is that like man dr- uh, dressing up as uh, uh, as woman it, it, to some degree does feel like cheap comedy. Like uh, uh, like it's uh, it's something you know is going to get a few laughs just, uh, just from the premise, and it's like it doesn't add. Uh, how much n- new to it? Like, uh, like I said, the part where like his character in the movie then dresses up uh, uh, like J- uh, Jill. I think the, uh, uh, I think that uh, that could have been e- uh, explored more because like that was really the only new uh, uh, new element it brought. It, it they uh, they don't bring much depth to either character. Yeah, I don't know, but like dr- actors doing drag goes back to the ancient Greeks, I feel like you don't have to reinvent the wheel for something to be enjoyable. No, but I feel like it, but I feel like the way it's used in modern uh, uh, comedies, like, uh, like say the Medea movies, uh, uh, big mama's uh, house. It, it, it is just like, Oh, all the jokes about this ca- uh, character are going to be around the fact that, you know, she, uh, uh, she's ugly. Uh, uh, fat and gr- uh, and gross, and that's kind of what this movie was. Yeah, but the other, as I feel like everyone who came into contact with Jill, like kind of had a thing. Like she got Al Pacino. <laughs> she wasn't. I feel like that's the expectation was what Adam Sandler's opinion of his twin sister was, but the reality was kind of what everyone else saw in Jill, which was like a fun, loving person who's kind of sexy. I'm not gonna lie, female Adam Sandler. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm gonna get into uh, into like my uh, I guess uh, my major criticism in the movie. It 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 kind of doesn't have a plot at times. Like there are a lot of uh, scenes that like push nothing in the story. It essentially has no first act. Like it. Uh, yeah, that's that's a fair criticism. <laughs> but, uh, like, cause. Uh, 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 like, cause he just finds his uh, sister an, uh, annoying. There, uh, there's no in depth uh, about like, oh, what happened to their relationship. They don't even have like a real recon- uh, uh, reconciliation, or, or it's like they actually discuss issues. He, uh, he's just like, oh, I love my sister, and runs to her. Like, yeah. He also at one point, uh, Katie Holmes was like, "You're being weird," and he's like, "Yeah, I'm weird. You should know that by now." And I feel like that's kind of like, yeah, that's. That's about as deep as it gets yeah. into his own behavior. <laughs> yeah, because like the really the only major plot line is the Al Pacino co- uh, commercial, and it's like that that feels like it com- uh, comes in pre- uh, pretty late, and it's like something, uh, and it's like at times it feels like it's just loosely t- uh, tied in there. Look, not every movie needs a plot line. Like think about like Hot Rod. Hot Rod didn't have too much of a plot line. He just loosely needed to get money, and then there was a series of skits on the way. Okay, but for uh, uh, but like uh, uh, there's a definitive uh, for, uh, uh, first act where he decides, oh, this is how I'm gonna get m- uh, money by putting on this big stunt, and then everything after that is leading up to the big stunt. Uh, you know what does have a plot, a very solid plot structure? Pixels. <laughs> Like okay, uh, like every scene in, in in Pixels, it understands what its objective is in uh, in the uh, in the story. Like it uh, like it builds up this alien invasion in a pretty like classic way for uh, uh, for sci fi uh, movies. You ju- uh, uh, you jump in the call to action. Uh, uh, they become heroes. They have uh, they have like the fall from grace, and then you uh, you go into the final act of resolution. Like it's uh, it's very so- uh, solidly uh, laid out in a, in a way that like builds on the characters. Yeah, but also that like that last act was a little loose. They really just like were hammering shit down in order to finally close it. Where they're like, oh yeah, everyone finds who they want to find. Cuber becomes the hot, sexy woman with swords. Everything works out perfectly. Like, there's no kind of like arbitrary. We sure about? I don't know. They, they just wrapped it up sort of like that. Uh, okay, I. Uh, okay, uh, again, I will. Get, uh, I will concede that like <laughs> Cuber becoming Josh Gad's sex doll again, really fucking weird. I'm. Not, <laughs> I'm not even gonna argue. Uh, uh, argue that at that point, like part. Uh, uh, part of my brain is still upset about it, but. Uh, but I will say, like everything else, like they it, they set up 
in a way where it's like you you can see it coming. All the uh, uh, all the pieces were there. The fact he has to face Donkey Kong in uh, in order to save the world, him and Michelle Ma uh, Mogan get, uh, getting together. It's like that was there throughout the movie. Okay, sorry, am I tripping or in the? I remember in the trailer, were they in like a tank shooting upwards at like a Galaga formation? I uh, oh I think uh, oh I think that was like the first attack on the uh, on the army base where before they knew what was going on. Oh. Uh, I will. Uh, I will say, uh, say. I think the only th uh, thing that ru uh, that ruins Kevin James as president is the fact we're watching this after Trump was president. I don't know. I had no issues with Kevin James being like quite literally. I was like, oh, Kevin James is president. Why hasn't he had a movie where he's president? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it's such a fun character. Yeah, I and I think uh, I think it works on a way because like a big thing of the uh, movie is that like all all these uh, 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 all these like loser nerds are finally getting their moment. So I think it, to tie into that, it also helps that it's like oh, someone you already saw as a loser nerd is now uh, is now the president, and uh, and it's like maybe not a good one because everyone's mad at him at the beginning, but he's confident to get the job done when it counts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, man, I want more Kevin James present. <laughs> <laughs> they had, they had his character down perfect. Like that was a classic Kevin James character. Yeah. No, no you know, it reminded me of, do you remember that Disney channel show Corey in the house? No. Okay. Well, on, on that show, it's like, he is like Corey from that. So Raven is living in the white house and the president is, uh, is like kind of a goofball. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> like, it, it, uh, like, cause the story, uh, cause in that case, the story was not for the president. It was for, uh, it was for Co uh, Corey and, uh, and for him to like see the uh, world in like schemes and antics. And so, uh, and so with Kevin James is pr uh, present, it, that changes how you see this world and, uh, and the potential of all the other characters. Yeah. Also, I love Jane Krakowski as his wife. Just any time they had Kevin James in one of those like gotcha moments was like when he's trying to read to the third grade. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I just like, I kind of, here's what I, I think this is sort of like a comment on Adam Sandler movies in general. Like Adam Sandler is either like an everyman down on his luck who finds some niche and ends up being great and getting the beautiful woman. Or he's, the guy who's fairly successful, who loses perspective of life and takes his beautiful wife and kids for granted and then ultimately regains that perspective by the end of the movie. Pixels is the first one. Jack and Jill is might be the only movie where he's both. <laughs> Jack is the up, lost perspective, successful guy. And Jill is the everyman who's kind of having her moment. And that I don't know. You're just not gonna get that in many movies. Like I just think they pulled it off. I uh, uh, I mean, well, as you uh, as you said, Jill uh, uh, Jill has her uh, her own life. I think that is ha uh, how Jack uh, sees things because you because uh, as you mentioned, Jill is uh, is liked among like everyone else she uh, she meets. So she clearly has stuff go uh, uh, going for her. I just feel like the film didn't fully explore uh, explore that. Like I would have liked to see more of her life in New York. Like it, it, like she seemed like such like a bright char charismatic person to just like not have anyone to spend New Year's Eve with. Look, Bill, in that movie shouldn't have been a minute over how long it was. <laughs> <laughs> like I like the movie, but if you're talking about taking Jack and Jill into two hour ranges, I'm just like I we talk so much about movies that should have been shorter, and this one was like fine. Like they understood the assignment. They're like, okay, it's a Jack, it's a Adam Sandler in drag playing two characters. They're like, we gotta get in and out of the we gotta get everyone in and out before they think too much about what's going on. I mean, I don't, th I don't think we we need to like create a whole nother act for uh, for her. Just like in the scene on uh, on New Year's, it would uh, 
it would have been nice if she just uh, hang with someone. She could be like, oh, uh, oh yeah, this is Gladys. She uh, she lives uh, next door. Th uh, this is Norman. He delivers uh, uh, my mail. I force him into conversation every single morning, but he likes it. Like just something like that okay. could, uh, uh, could, uh, could just like add more depth to her life. Yeah, that is a that's a fair point because essentially she's getting made fun of, and then Jack shows up, and that's what gives her depth. And then Al Pacino shows up, and that's what give her gives her depth. But ultimately, those are two things that happened like a week ago. They're not like they're not really about her. Essentially, yeah, it's one uh, it's one of those things where uh, where it's like they're not letting her be the protagonist of her own story. They're uh, they're just having things happen to her. Well, yeah, Adam Sandler is the protagonist in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and like to your po uh, point that like uh, Pixels uh, is more like the loser guy, uh, guy get, uh, getting his moment. I do all, uh, uh, also th uh, think like it also wor works as uh, as like a semi cr uh, critique as the loser guy because you take something like. Ha uh, uh, like Happy G uh, Gilmore, where he, uh, where like he has one skill, and then he learns to up, uh, apply it in a way that it very much exists in the real wor world. This movie is saying like, "Hey, you, uh, you losers that sit on your ass, do nothing all day, and live in your mom's basement, you will only be useful if aliens invade via video ga games." I hope you understand that. Yeah, I kind of. I don't know. I feel like the writer had opinions about nerds in the eighties where they're just like, yeah, they're useless. Those skills aren't really going anywhere. <laughs> like they, none of them are successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than Kevin James. Yeah. Except Kevin, uh, Kevin James. They had to pull one out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did they say what he went to jail for? I, I think it was like, uh, it wasn't a violent crime. It was a, uh, uh, I think he, it, I think he ran a scam or something. Oh, okay. Oh well, that that tracks. Yeah. Uh, they also, uh, they also me uh, mentioned he was, uh, he had four X, uh, X Ys. I was just like, at what point did like video g gamers become rock stars? Like, uh, like I think this movie would have also had more to work with if it came out now that. Esports are becoming su uh, such a big thing, and you have these e esport athletes with a bunch of endor uh, endorsements. Like, so, uh, uh, like they could have really, uh, uh, like some of these guys could have really made a killing. Yeah, but I feel like the part what made the movie work in terms of like video games is the fact that like eighties games have monsters and stuff and like fun characters to kind of see how they interact with the environment. Versus if you were doing like Gears of War, it wouldn't really be pixels. It would be like fully rendered monsters just going through the streets that essentially turn into like a zombie movie. Yeah. And I mean, I th I feel like for uh, uh, for like the sake of the movie, I do think 80 video games were, uh, work, uh, work better just because th uh, those are pl uh, played in 2D as opposed uh, to something like Halo or Call of Duty where you, uh, you are working on an entire landscape. Uh, 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 but like uh, this is a slight de deviation I just found it weird that Adam Sandler's ca uh, characters when the kids uh, like I play Halo, uh, Halo and uh, Call of Duty and he's like I don't play that crap I find it weird his entire personality is video games and he just plays no modern video games yeah and he's like rude about it too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that stuff will rot your brain yeah <laughs> yeah. like could you imagine if it was like it, someone interviewed Francis Ford Coppola and uh, and they were like oh what uh, what do you th uh, think ab uh, about Oppenheimer and he was like what the fuck is that he's <laughs> 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 uh, like I haven't watched a movie since uh, that came out after 1985 because after that it's all garbage <laughs> Okay, they both movies had a few celebrity cameos. Uh, yeah, because again, Adam Sandler can just buy anyone. Yeah, uh, Pixels had Serena Williams, Martha Stewart. Am I missing any? I, uh, I'm sure there's a. Uh, no, I, I'm talking about. Oh, sorry, celebrity cameos where they play themselves. Where they play themselves? I uh, I can't think of any more. Any more. 
I, I also feel like there's a lot to can, count. Part of me was distracted by he got Pierre Dinklage, and this came out like during the height of Game of Thrones, <laughs> like before, uh, like before people were, uh, were saying Game of Th uh, Thrones is going down. Th that Pierre Dinklage. What, do you think it was like uh, one of those Peter Dinklage wanted his kids to be able to watch a movie he was in? I wouldn't be surprised. I feel uh, like there's at least every great actor has at least one kids movie that they want to be able to watch with their kids. Well, well yeah, because that because uh, that's the thi uh, thing. Like, it, uh, uh, like if you, if you have kids, they don't care. You're a, uh, you're a famous like Oscar winning uh, uh, winning actor. They they'll look at your movies and be like, that looks boring. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that was i feel like al pacino playing al pacino in jack and jill was the highlight of the entire movie yeah i do uh, i do feel like the uh, uh, like it only uh, that part you have to get someone of al pacino's pedigree like uh, uh, like because i think uh, because uh, if they got amar uh, amar star like if if they uh, like if they got usher i feel uh I feel like it, it it would be weird. It's uh, it's like they're uh, they're trying uh, they're trying too hard, but like I feel like Al, Pac uh, Al Pacino was like r right there of like oh yeah he is Al uh, he is Al Pacino, but all, uh, also late stage Al, uh, Al Pacino. Like I I feel like Al, uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro uh, were at the time were both in the eras of their careers where they're like I will take a paycheck and just didn't care. <laughs> There's a great line in the film where Al Pacino, for some reason, just keeps calling Jill Bronx. He he's a he plays like a real weirdo version of himself in the movie, where he's like, "Hey Bronx, like I got you a real stickball bat," <laughs> and then he's like, "I'm gonna have my private baker throw you the ball." And she he oh, he also plays kind of a creep. He's like creepy, weird Al Pacino in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, very, it's, very out of touch too. Yeah, it's weird. For as much of a method actor as Al Pacino is, it didn't, it didn't feel like he went all in on playing Al Pacino. Like he, like he's known as one, uh, as like such a hu huge over, uh, over actor. It's like he, it's like he could have done a lot, uh, a lot more than that. It's, uh, it's like he, he just walked around and said regular, uh, uh, regular lines. It's like it felt like he was really there for a paycheck. <laughs> But yeah, so she smacks the ball and it hits his Oscar and she's like, oh no, you've got to have more than one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you'd be surprised, but no. <laughs> Wait, what did he win an Oscar for? The Godfather? No. You're you're never going to guess this. It's a movie called Scent of a Woman. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah there's a reason. It's, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, it's... Uh, uh, I haven't seen it. I've heard it's a good movie, but it's best known as like the the movie where Al Pacino won his Oscar. Like like you know, like you know how like a lot of people don't talk about the Revenant, but uh, the people are like, oh, that's what Leo won his Oscar for. Same deal. Yeah. What do you think Leo should have won his Oscar for? Uh, I would say Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, okay, yeah. Who ended up winning that year? Matthew McConaughey. In Interstellar? No, Dallas Buyers Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one was probably going to win. <laughs> <laughs> was that movie? That movie's great, though. Yeah, the the, the movie was good. I, uh, I, I don't know. We might be getting on a tangent, yeah, so but <laughs> it was like, I have a, I have a thing that uh, that's like certain, uh, certain actors win for, uh, win for brownie points. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh. Mm. All right. Uh, oh yeah. I will also say about uh, about pixels. Like in uh, in there, in, uh, there is like so, uh, uh, some co uh, commentary about like how uh, how a lot of so uh, societies, like America in particular, uh, kind of functions through the lens of competition and uh, and war. Because the because uh, the fact like they sent a. Uh, 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 a time ca uh, uh, capsule and the biggest th uh, thing an outside civilization took from it is hey competition and war is super important to them and then how uh, what's the military's first response shoot them they don't even listen to any of the transmissions they uh, <laughs> they uh, they left aliens on red and they were like we're going to shoot them first retext later <laughs> <laughs> well that's like how it would probably go 
Uh, I just feel like if aliens ever came, there's no way it would just end with us being like, whoa, aliens, that's real interesting. Like, I feel like it'd take about a day or two before I we went to war with them. Uh, 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 well, yeah, uh, well, yeah, because I, because uh, I think like it's basically military policy uh, uh, of like it, there's something in the sky. We all know what it is. Shoot it down. Uh, but then, like in the end, what ends, uh, what ends up ha happening is like th uh, through actual str uh, through more strategy and uh, uh, and uh, and some diplomacy. That's how they find their. Uh, that's how they find their solution. Yeah. All right. Um, shit, I don't have a ton left on this. You came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the also the Pacino scene with where he's playing Macbeth and taking phone calls, oh, and then he starts doing the Godfather. Like that's just a great. I don't know. That's a great scene. Like there's so many great moments for a loose sort of funny movie. Uh, okay, but like I feel like that uh, that's uh, that was Al Pacino's best scene, and that was like the. Uh, the big scene where, where it's like, again, it feels weird saying this, where he's playing Al Pacino really well. And because, <laughs> uh, uh, like, that, that's something where he's really playing into the public persona uh, he has of this, like, very se serious method actor. Because, like, they even se uh, set that up by having a video of him, like, freaking out on his cell phone and the audience go uh, uh, going off go viral. And so, uh, uh, and so like, I feel like that uh, that scene it does a good job of like giving him stuff to work with, and then uh, also like it, by comparison to the earlier scene, it sh it shows like oh this is what Jill actually it, it means to him, and uh, and like on uh, honestly I do feel like that's how theater goers would would go like they would be honored to watch an Al Pacino phone call. <laughs> well, it's interesting, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that where he's like Bruce Jenner's play, <laughs> playing King Richard. <laughs> it was a good. I haven't seen pre-transition Caitlyn in a while. Like that's it's another great cameo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another, uh, yeah. Just another thing about one, uh, one of these uh, movies that like greatly changes when watching it now. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, all right, it's time for concessions. Yeah. My first concession, I says multiple times uh, uh, already, the ending is disturbing. Like, I really couldn't gonna get the idea that, like, someone actually wrote out Q uh, uh, Cuber beco uh, becoming what is, uh, what is essentially Josh Gad's sex doll, and then they have uh, kids and thought, like, everyone would be cool with it. Like, everyone's going to clap. It's like, no, no, we didn't. That, uh, uh, that's what... Uh, uh, that's weird. That man's gonna stay in his mom's basement, j uh, just playing with Cuber all day. Yeah, I. So you said there's three writers, right? Two. Two writers. I just want to know which one pitched it and which one was like, fine. Yeah. It, like I imagine it was a slog to get that into the script. It, yeah, because uh, I mean, so I, uh, uh, so I was cu curious about this because, like, because I, uh, I, uh, I was just like. This seems to like make a lot of sense if it was written by a virgin, uh, but uh, but no, the uh, both writers have kids. Uh, uh, one of whom is on Saturday Night Live. Who? I don't remember his name. He's in Please Don't Destroy. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Movie's a little racist, not gonna lie. They all the illegal immigrant jokes in it, it's bordering on a little anti-Semitic too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was one of those uh, things where it's like, you know, uh, you know how like in some Adam Sandler movies he gets Rob Schneider to play like a, a really offensive stereotype. Uh, his type and like when asked about it, he pull, uh, pulls it like, "Hey, Rob's a quarter Filipino." That uh, <laughs> that card, like that, that's how it felt like for a lot of characters in the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, like the they keep knocking over the old abuela in the park while they're playing soccer, and they keep bringing over chilies to wake her up. There's like a lot of where you're like, "Oh, okay," pretty sure like three white guys wrote this. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, n uh, next one. I I do feel uh, feel like the uh, uh, 
the president could have been played by so uh, someone with like some authority f- uh, figure J- just because like i uh, uh, i feel like if uh, uh, like having everyone like on a similar plane of authority uh, it kind of means no, uh, no one has a- any words like if you elevate one person th- uh, then it really highlights everyone like could you uh, imagine the president played by someone like jk simmons who uh, who does have really good com- uh, comedic timing but could also really command the room yeah but like then also how do you get adam sandler around jk simmons i think they could find a way i don't know i just like i fucking love kevin oh, kevin james playing uh the president so much that I don't think you needed an authoritative president in that movie. It wasn't like Air Force One or something. <laughs> it was pixels. Like I, like again, I don't think he needs to like have authority the whole uh, movie. I think like just at the beginning for like a couple, uh, a couple scenes, like that war room s- uh, scene where uh, uh, where Adam Sandler's just going off, kind of do what uh, what he wanted. I think uh, I think just someone to put their foot down. Uh, uh, in uh, in that mo- uh, in that moment w- uh, uh, would have been great because then it feels like a bigger moment later when he's just like hey let the nerds run things <laughs> and, uh, and like now nah, because now he's taking a foot off and just letting them have free reign okay yeah you you've kind of got a point with that but uh yeah there's not much of a plot to this movie <laughs> it uh <laughs> It just kind of goes. They keep introducing characters and it's kind of like you're watching a day in their life in the sense that like a day in your life doesn't have a plot, but it's also a movie. So it sort of needs a plot. It sort of seems like they just pitch jokes and then put them into an order. And then that was the script. Yeah. It was, uh, what it felt like, it felt like a single episode of a sitcom that was really stretched. Like I uh, uh, cause I think if, you, uh, cause I think when you really break, uh, re- break down the story, like it does f- uh, feel like it's a simple s- uh, sitcom. It's like guy with a, a, a sister that, uh, uh, that bugs him. He sets him up w- uh, uh, with a date with a client to try and land him. That's a, like a classic sitcom premise. Yeah. And, uh, and it just went on for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Which like good ninety minutes, enjoyable, fun time, but like yeah, that's a fair criticism. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, and then the uh, uh, the last concession I have, just about every scene in Pixels is just so close to making real insightful co- uh, uh, commentary. They just don't like push themselves to it, because because uh, I do think there is uh, again there is a lot that. Uh, there about uh, about like uh, about like how uh, society kind of runs on competition and then uh, and then war and then uh, and then how authority figures re- uh, respond to emer- emergencies and you know what uh, and you know those little gu- uh, guys that view, uh, that view themselves as something great like there was like there was an opportunity for them to uh, uh, to be uh, uh, to say so much, but they kind of squander it. I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the movie doesn't define Adam Sandler's character as having flaws. They kind of frame it as the world around him is flawed, and so the world changes, but he doesn't. Well, yeah, because he's the everyman who found his niche and no longer needs to yeah, change. The, 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 but that's the thing. His niche, uh, his niche was the... Uh, uh, was the same it uh, it just became super important like it going back to hap- uh, happy Gil- uh, gilmore like his niche was the slap shot in, uh, in hockey but he uh, but you know he applied it to an entirely different uh, sport and learned things along the way so now he can take care uh, uh, take care of his grandma now he can hail uh, hail himself uh, and uh, and you know, same thing in the uh, in the Water Boy. He found something he's really good at along the way. He learned to like stand up to his mom and become independent, and stand uh, stand on his own. Like Adam Sandler's character in Pixels 
is the exact same person at the end of the movie that has a star. <laughs> the only difference is now he saved the world and that that's probably going to like get him endorsements to live off of it, which it should uh, gr uh, granted, but it's, uh, uh, but it's like, it feels like the ultimate theme of the movie is like, Hey, if you're, if you're a loser and you're good at, uh, at one thing, the it that's the world's problem not yours well i guess you could also look at it like he finally stepped up to his potential rather than kind of shying away he I, had an opportunity he succeeded fully in it versus like he was a smart kid growing up he had like good qualities and he just sort of squandered them all yeah true but now he like he stepped up he lived up to his potential okay and i I will say, combined with uh, with the whole Kubert sex doll thing, it feels kind of incelly. Okay, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, finally, yeah, you they cast Norm Macdonald in a character with the name Fun Bucket, and they gave him like forty five seconds of screen time and barely any dialogue. They should have had him become a bigger character. Yeah, I. I mean, th I feel like there uh, there was a lot of r room to wor uh, work there because I mean, because uh, I mean, like I I know this came because uh, this came out before the age of uh, of dating apps. I mean, like we've been on uh, dating app dates. We've heard sto uh, stories from a bunch of our friends. There's so much uh, wrong that can go. Uh, there's so much that can go wrong on like apps on uh, uh, like Hinge when you meet so uh, someone off of there and Tinder. And, uh, and like that's something where it's like you really get to like talk to someone and see uh, see their face could you imagine going on a date with someone off of craigslist <laughs> the can of worms that can open i've never done a craigslist date but i've done something kind of close and yeah it's a little freaky <laughs> <laughs> like i uh, like I, don't know, I feel like they uh, I feel like they had so much room to just make him like an absolute weirdo. Like, uh, well, like, the, uh, like they could have, uh, uh, like they could have had him be one of those people that uh, that was like uh, uh, that, you know, liked well moisturized skin a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had the name Fun Bucket. Like, it, uh, man, it was. I was just like, oh, that's all they did. It felt like very wasted potential of Norm Mac I also just like he died and I just want more Norm McDonald yeah, in my uh, life. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It like that's one of those things that uh, that feels like that uh, uh, no one involved had been single for a while like everyone in there was just happily married so they <laughs> uh, so no one went on a Craigslist date and they didn't consult anyone who has. <laughs> yeah. All right, you wanna wanna finish this bad boy up? Uh, uh, yeah. All right. So now it's time for our cl uh, closing statements. Uh, so, pi uh, uh, pixels is a near perfect story structure with a, a not so near perfect execution. What, uh, uh, now, was there plenty of room for growth? Yes. But also, what it set out to do, it did really well. It was it was still a very fun light watch, which it was uh, meant to be, and it added something very new to Adam Sandler's ever growing arsenal. Look, Jack and Jill was a great movie that had twice the Adam Sandler than normal. Of course, it's going to be criticized by people who don't like Adam Sandler. <laughs> it's just too much for a lot of people, but it's a great, it's a good film. It's a good film. It's a fun 90 minutes. You're going to enjoy it. You sit down, maybe like smoke a little bit of weed. I just think it got so much hate that it didn't deserve. And that it was like a, it deserved like a 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Overall, okay. it was fun. Okay. I, I just want to uh, uh, I just want to like get your thoughts on this. How many like uncut gems and hustles do you think Adam Sandler ha ha has to be in to get out of like the Craig doghouse? I feel like he's out of it now. Cause like in between, I think in between uncut gems and hustle, he did Huey Halloween. 
Did you see Huey no, Halloween? I, I haven't seen it. Huey Halloween is great. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb, but it is so much fun. <laughs> No one talked about Huey Halloween. I think that happened. Hang on. I need to check. We got 10 more minutes. Um, yeah. Well, I think what, uh, what it is, is that now that people have seen Uncut Gems and, and Hustles, it's very clear that he is very talented and capable of making very, uh, uh, like great movies. It's just... Uh, uh, it's just the critics are like, oh, he simply doesn't care a lot of the times and will do what he wants. So what's the point in us really saying anything? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of uh, it's kind of like when a new Transformers movie uh, uh, comes out. It's like, look, you've already decided whether or not you're going to see this. So what I say is essentially useless. <laughs> OK, yeah, it went Uncut Gems, Hubie Halloween, uh, then Hustle. So he just slipped Hubie. I feel like so long as he puts out like one serious dramatic role every three years, he can do as much silly fun shit as he wants. Yeah, pretty much. And now he has a deal with Netflix, so he's just putting out stuff constantly. I think that's the other thing. I think once they got out of theaters and went to Netflix, it seemed like a lot more reasonable to watch a really dumb Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now like... all. Uh, all the cr uh, critics are uh, responding to publications. It's just like, hey, this isn't in theaters. I don't, you don't have to send me, right? Like, <laughs> like if they really hate Adam Sandler. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, this has been another episode of Film versus Movie. Again, this is round one of our, uh, uh, of our double feature face-offs. Uh, face there is a link in the episode description as well as our Instagram bio where you can vote and decide who won. Uh, so, uh, uh, so cast your votes and decide who you want to see face punishment. All right. Yep. So, yep uh, this is it. <laughs> yep. This has been another episode. Th uh, thank, everyone, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.